What is up engine heads? Today we're doing some unboxing and we're unboxing something that's going to be an integral part of my upcoming turbo engine build that I'm calling Project Underdog. We're unboxing a set of forged aftermarket connecting rods. So let's immediately justify the title of the video and let's get started with the unboxing. So today we're unboxing a set of connecting rods from a company called Max Peating Rods. And although the name of the company is, I have to admit, a bit funny, I think the rods aren't. I think these are actually very good rods and I have many reasons to believe these are perfectly adequate for high performance, high horsepower builds. As you can see, everything has been packaged pretty well. The box itself looks nice and there's a lot of padding to ensure that the rods do not get damaged during shipping. Also, the rods themselves have been packaged nicely, wrapped twice and covered in oil so they don't rust. Inside the box, we also have some papers, some install instructions, as well as some torquing specs and a bit of information about the Max Speeding Rods company, what they do, what they sell and so on and so forth. So all in all, I have to say this looks pretty good and it gives you confidence and demonstrates that these aren't your typical no-name brand rods that come in a point box with zero install instructions and zero customer support. So what we have here is a set of 4340 steel forged connecting rods. As you probably know, 4340 is a really strong steel alloy. It has a very high tensile strength, very high fatigue and wear resistance, and it ensures that aftermarket performance forged connecting rods that are made from 4340 are capable of withstanding the high loads uh, which are present in high performance and forced induction engines. And these rods are also made from 4340. But I guess Max Speeding Rods suspected that people wouldn't believe them that at this price point this really is 4340. So they got a certificate from German TUV, I think Germans pronounce it TÜV, to confirm that this is indeed 4340. And it indeed is. It has the right sort of materials and uh, composition of chemical elements to make this 4340. Which means these are pretty strong rods. As you're probably guessing, at this price point, these rods are made in China. And even today, in 2020, we have a bit of prejudice associated with the made in China thing. People still believe that when something is made in China, it's all quality and you shouldn't buy it. I personally think this is very misleading and I think that China is like any other country in the world. You get what you paid for. So these are cheap and you get what you paid for, so they should be junk. Well, not really. It's not that simple. Uh, fact is that very many aftermarket forged connecting rods are made in China. The same way and from the same material that these rods are made from as well. Very, very few rods are actually made in the States or in Europe. Very few. If you do your research, you're going to find that's the case. And what many companies do is they simply don't tell you where the rods are made from on their site or anywhere else. Or they tell you that the rods are, and I have to do the quote thing for that, finish machined in the US or in Europe. And the finish machine thing is in my opinion, a joke, because there really is no definition of what finish machined is. You could get this rod pretty much finished from China, forged, heat treated, shot peened, everything, and then you just hone it in your little factory, and then you can call it finish machined. In fact, you could, you could remove a single micron from it with a belt sander and you could legally still call this finish machined because there really is no precise definition of what finish machining is. It's a pretty vague and very broad term. And what companies actually do, many companies, I'm not saying all of them, many companies, they simply order from factories very similar or the same as the Max Speeding Rods factory. They order a rod that's made from the same stuff and the same way as this one. They order in bulk, they get a good price, they import it into wherever they want, and then they sell it with a markup at a price quite a bit higher than this, this one, although the rod is pretty much the same. But we shouldn't be focusing on the made in China thing because as you can see, it doesn't really reveal anything. Instead, we should be looking at the rods and at the details that can give us insight into their actual quality. But before that, let's talk about the way these things are made. 
And in fact, they're made the same way as I think 99% of forged aftermarket rods are made. Stage one is of course the forging itself. And these are hot forged, actually drop forged at really high temperatures. After that, we have some CNC machining and some multi-stage heat treating to ensure a strong rod. Beyond that, we have some shot pinning to give us an optimal surface finish. And after that, we have some honing, which is done on a Sunnen honing machine when it comes to the max speeding rods. Sunnen are pretty much the standard when it comes to honing machines. And beyond that, I guess we have some laser etching of the logos, and then they put them in these little uh, oily things to ensure they don't rust, and then put them in a box and ship them to you. And what I just described is pretty much the same way as any other good forged rod is made. Now let's take a more detailed look at the rods themselves. As you can see, this is your typical H-beam design rod. It's a pretty classical design, very similar to many other designs on the market, which is a good thing because this is a design that I think over the years has been proven to not have any significant weaknesses. Another really nice thing with these rods is that they do have ARP bolts, ARP fasteners, and they are in fact genuine. And I know they're genuine because before deciding to go with these rods and to install them in my engine and give them a chance, I did quite a bit of research on these rods and apparently some other people did too. In fact, I found a thread on the MG forums where a dude bought these rods, had access to some pretty good testing equipment and he tested them and they tested well, just as good as the vast majority of other rods and even better than some other rods. But what he also did is that he contacted ARP to confirm that these are in fact genuine ARP rods and he referenced the serial number on the bolts and contacted ARP and ARP responded. They said that indeed these are their bolts and Max Speeding Rods is one of their customers and they do order bolts and they do install them into their rods, which is nice. I mean, at this price point, genuine RP, it's pretty cool. But these are ARP 2000 bolts. They're good, but if you want better, Max Speeding Rods gives you that option too. If you pay a bit of extra, you can upgrade the bolts to L19 ARP bolts, which I guess is nice if you're planning to install this into a pretty extreme belt. Now, these rods are also rated at 600 to 800 horsepower, and although pushing a 4A GE engine to that sort of horsepower definitely isn't easy, uh, and although I will be pushing my 4A FE turbo build to only around 300 horsepower, um, and I guess the horsepower rating should give me confidence that there's extra room for whatever, uh, I personally think horsepower ratings are useless. Uh, because a horsepower rating is a very vague thing. You can destroy a rod with 100 horsepower. Just put some knock and some detonation in there and watch them bend within like two minutes. You can even destroy a rod, any rod, uh, with around 200 to 300 horsepower. Just make sure you tune in a big stupid aggressive torque curve with a big torque spike and watch them bend. I mean, horsepower ratings are nice. They They sort of give you some sort of insight but you really shouldn't judge or compare rods based on these horsepower ratings manufacturers play around with them they tell you they can do 1000 1500 horsepower it, it really doesn't mean much and you should judge and compare rods based on some other specs now max speeding rods also claims that these are balanced to within one gram of each other which is pretty nice and that's something we can easily confirm to see if it really is true so here's an high accuracy scale. Let's weigh them and let's see how balanced they are. So max speeding rods definitely wasn't lying. They are in fact better than one gram within each other. They're actually within around half gram within each other, which is definitely nice. And the statement is true. When it comes to the warranty in these, we do have a two year warranty against manufacturer defects. And what you have to understand on warranties when it comes to forged aftermarket connecting rods is that pretty much all manufacturers just give you this. A warranty against manufacturer defects. Nobody's giving you a full warranty. There's no such thing for aftermarket forged rods. And once you install them and you run the engine, 
if you destroy these, nobody's going to warranty them because, of course, no manufacturer on planet Earth can account for the different possible scenarios when it comes to uh, your engine, the different stages of tune, the way you tune it, your oiling systems, the clearances when you install these, and so on and so forth. Manufacturer defects means that you can return these only if something isn't within spec, maybe the bore is too large, uh, maybe they aren't within one gram of each other, and so on and so forth. If that's the case, if the manufacturer did something wrong with the manufacturing, you can return these and get your money back or whatever. That's the warranty everybody's going to give you. So max speeding rods pretty much gives you the same warranty as anybody else. Now taking a more in-depth look at these rods, these definitely seem nice. The cross hatch pattern, the honing pattern on both the big end and the small end looks pretty good to me. Uh, the small end is a nice bronze bushing which is suitable for a floating piston pin and it even has a nice oiling groove which is good for durability, reliability, longevity. Uh, also the oiling hole on both, uh, on both sides of it is chamfered and this is definitely something you want uh, when it comes to oiling holes. On top of this, Max Speeding Rods claims that these are X-rayed, sonic tested and magnafluxed, which is definitely nice and something that pretty much all serious rod manufacturers do. Something I really like is that these rods have a system to positively locate the cap onto the rod. As you can see, these two protrusions on the cap ensure it is positively located onto the rod body and it prevents any sort of cap lock and you definitely don't want cap lock on your rods. The added bonus is that you can enjoy the satisfying view of disappearing parting lines. So these are definitely some very nice rods. They seem to be ticking all the right boxes. I really like these rods. Is there something that I don't like about them? Well, yes, in fact, there is. And what I don't like about them is this tiny little sharp corner right here. It's a very minor thing and you could say that I'm nitpicking, but I still want to mention this because although it is very tiny, you could potentially call this a stress fracture point. And although it's very, very unlikely that the cap is going to fracture here, I would still prefer uh, if this thing was actually blended, if this sharp corner was blended into this edge right next to it. That being said, you can remove this sharp corner yourself with a small file and about two minutes of your time. Uh, also, this edge on the other side here that I'm touching right now, I can sense a very, very small degree of sharpness and roughness. But this too, you can remove with some sandpaper in about, I don't know, five seconds of your time. And I'm going to do both of these things and remove these little sharp things before I actually chuck these into my engine. Uh, as I said, very small, minor issue, but again, I wanted to mention it. So I guess that's it when it comes to the unboxing and the first impressions of these. And I have to say, first impressions are really, really nice. When you consider the, the price point, honestly, they seem a bit incredible. But me talking and looking at, at these rods is nice. But the real test is going to be once I install these into the engine um, and we run the engine and we crank up the boost and we see whether these rods complain or not. I honestly don't think they will be complaining, but that's going to be the real factual test. And we will have actual evidence to confirm whether these really are an amazing bang for your buck. So yeah, I guess that's it when it comes to this auto review. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked it. Hope you found it useful and informative. If you want to pick up a set of these rods yourself, uh, there's some links and some coupon discount codes as well. So you can get some discount on these if you decide to buy them. Uh, just I just want to say there's no affiliate sales or anything. I do not make any money if you buy these rods at all. This is just an honest, genuine review of what I think about these rods and my first impressions of the max beating rods, connecting rods. So yeah, thanks all for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel. Brrrr, <laughs> da <laughs>